I went in to go up to the Toei animation uh, licensing or office or whatever, press the button for the elevator and the security guard ran over and he was like, oh, sorry. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here for another weekly Shrippum story time. <gasps> See that? I breathed. All right, let's get into it. So I got a box of one. I just love this. I love this set. I love opening. I love Shrippuming it. What can I say? And if you want to see more of it, Shrippum, you could subscribe. It would be really cool if you did, because I do a lot of other One Piece content along with Dragon Ball Super Card Game content, and there's a new set of Dragon Ball coming out soon, and it looks really good. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I'm going to be shripping all of it here. Thank you so much, and let's get into the story about uh, my most fun time in Japan. All right, so I got stuck in Narita Airport for 28 hours once, and it was actually the best day of my entire life. You know, one of the things that I've learned from One Piece is sometimes things feel like a bummer when they're happening and you're like oh man this is gonna make a good story one day at least well what I try and do is I try and make it a good story while it's happening because I figure hey why not I'm here I'm here for it bless them so why not just see if we can you know make this a good story while it's going down so I'm gonna have to rewind a couple trips back basically um, I went to, I don't know if you guys have seen the Dragon Ball Broly movie, but I was really hyped to see the Broly movie. And um, I was so hyped actually that I went to Japan eight months before the Broly movie came out to buy tickets to go see the Broly movie. Um, yeah, so I went to Japan eight months before it came out. Ooh, law out of the first pack, very nice. Um, I'm gonna shuffle these up a little bit because the, you know, I've been getting just like the heat out of the first couple packs. So I'm gonna just shuffle these packs here and get them shuffled up and all right, that should be good. Anyway, so I went to Japan eight months before the Broly movie, bought a ticket to go see the Broly movie because I was really excited to get the Broly movie newspaper. I thought that there was gonna be a Broly movie newspaper because there was a Frieza movie newspaper and I was in Japan when the Frieza movie came out. Um, so I went to buy a ticket and then fast forward to when I went to see the Broly movie, I went to go see it and they didn't have the newspapers and I was really bummed out because I was really excited to get that newspaper and here we are and I couldn't even get the newspaper. So kind of a bummer, but you know, it is what it is. So I went to go see that movie and then I went back to New Jersey and then I went back to Japan again. But in between this time, actually this was before I went to go see the Broly movie, I got really into the Dragon Ball Super card game and I have this signature Goku that I had in a deck that I was playing and I happened to be at Comic-Con and I won a raffle to go meet Masako Nozawa and I got something signed by her and I actually got that card signed by her because the card has Sean Schemmel's signature on it, but I wanted it signed by Masako Nozawa. So I actually got the card signed by Masako Nozawa at uh, Comic-Con. I was either gonna play in the, uh, I was gonna play in the Marvel Contest of Champions Championship, or I could meet Masako Nozawa, and I picked to meet Masako Nozawa. So I'm really glad that I did that. I got that card signed. And they're taking a bunch of pictures of me when I was getting it signed, because I was waking, wearing an Awakened Power t-shirt, which is actually what that card evolves into. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Awakened Power, but it's kind of like the, uh, the grail of the Dragon Ball Super card game. Um, so yeah, so I went back to Japan again after that, after I saw the Broly movie, and when I went back to Japan that time, um, I went to the Toei Animation Museum. And when I went to the Toei Animation Museum, I met um, some of the people that were there and I showed them my Dragon Ball shirt that I was wearing and I showed them my friend Konishiki and I said, hey, I got Konishiki walking around Japan in Dragon Ball shirts. And he's like a great source of advertising. He's been on basically every advertisement for everything Japanese like ever. So. How do we turn this into some cash? Because, you know, I'm making these shirts and they were kind of like, sorry, like we can't do any of that here. Like you have to go to, uh, you have to make a meeting with the Toei licensing company. I was like, look, dude, I'm not gonna, nobody's gonna believe me. Look at me. Like you really think that if I called them and I was like, hey, I make Dragon Ball shirts for Konishiki, they're gonna wanna have a meeting with me. So I ended up, uh, I ended up finding where the building was. And the morning before I left, actually that night, Kony called me and he was like, hey dude, you gotta be careful. There's a, uh, there's a tsunami coming and it's, uh, or I think it was a typhoon 
and he was like it's really crazy out there you got to be careful you know travel might be messed up tomorrow so that morning I went out to go find the Toei Animation Museum. It was in Nakano. I found the address of it, or not the museum, the headquarters. So I, it was actually the only train that was open. All the other trains were closed. We took our bags, we took a, uh, we took a cab to the Tokyo station and locked our bags up in some lockers. And then we took the, the, uh, the one train that was open to Nakano and we got there and um we went and found the oh is this a oh no kaido kaido always makes me think there's an altar back there anyway i we found the the, the um i found the the building and i went in to go up to the Taiwei animation uh licensing or office or whatever and as i walked in the uh you know i went there and i pressed the button for the elevator and the security guard ran over and he was like oh sorry and i was like what and he was like uh and i was like oh and i showed him my shirt i was wearing a dragon ball shirt and i was like uh toy animation uh business meeting da and he was like oh business meeting da and then he went in and he actually pushed the button for me and i was able to get up to the floor Ooh, there's something really shiny back here this is it this is the hit right here oh croco boy what the heck wait there were This is the sixth alt art leader that I've pulled, but that means there's an alt art in this box, which is kind of hype, which is weird because the, so these weren't from the same case. These boxes were not from the same case because out of these 12 boxes, I've already pulled three alt art leaders, which is not in a case. So a Kuroko boy, what's your secret? Luffy's mom. Come on. Tell us, tell us a secret. Does he kind of look a little like Luffy? He opens his eyes a little bit. And was, I don't know. The theory is there. You know what Ivankov can do. But wow, Kroko boy, <laughs> what a moment also. Yeah, so I got up into the building and they, they let me in. And so there's going to be an alt art in this, which is exciting. Uh, they let me into the building and um, I went up and I talked to them and I showed them the stuff that was going on. And they, you know, told me to email them and we would be in touch. And I don't think my clothing company is big enough to actually like do something like that. So we ended up not actually doing anything in that direction. Is this the alt art right here? Oh no, Luffy, nice. Okay, so the next shiny hit is gonna be an alt art because we just got a Kroko boy, Doshta Kroko boy. Um, yeah, so um, I went up into the building and you know we talked and then we had to go. So we went and we're sitting on the track to catch our train to the airport and all of a sudden we hear that the train is delayed until 6.30 and our flight was at 5.30. So, and we've left ourselves plenty of time because I like, you know, eating at the airport and hanging out there. So immediately run up, return our tickets, look, in, look, for, a, uh, look for a cab. And we see one cab that there's a huge line of people waiting for cabs. And one cab was just dropping people off somewhere else. So I run over and I go to this guy and I'm like, how much for a ride to the airport? And he's like, uh, you know, it's kind of busy right now. So probably like a hundred dollars. This was all translated. I was using Google translate to communicate with him. And so it was going to be a hundred bucks. So I was like, okay, sure. Let's do it. We got to do it. So we get in the cab, we're driving to the airport. Every road was closed. It took us eight and a half hours to get to the airport. And I felt so bad for this dude because this dude that was driving like was this nice young guy. He clearly didn't sign up for this. And I was looking around in cars next to us and people were yelling at their cab drivers and getting all mad. And, you know, I had arranged to some backup flights in case we weren't going to make it onto our flight. But this kid was like, you know, this is not what he signed up for. And I wasn't about to sit there and yell at him. So I started talking to him and telling him about, you know, Kony. And he was like really psyched that I knew Konishki and I liked Dragon Ball and I was talking to him and I was like, man, you know, this cab ride that you're in right now, like, yeah, it might be, you know, the longest cab ride ever. But after this, this is basically like a cab ride. That's a uh, room and spirit of time for oh, what <laughs> Yosha alt shanks room of spirit and time. That's it. Yeah. So, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy to pull that wild. Um, wow. So yeah, so I told, this is wild box. This is an absolutely wild box. What the heck? What the heck and heck? Um, anyway, so I told him, I was like, dude, this is like, you know, you're gonna be the best cab driver ever after this because you're in this car now and you've, you know, you're basically like training to become the best cab driver ever in the universe possible. And um, he thought that was really funny and we were joking around and, 
eventually we got to the we got to the airport and when we got there we um we were looking for somewhere to eat but we both had to go to the bathroom so we went to the, went to go to the bathroom and as soon as he got out of the bathroom, we looked at the phone and it was like, oh man, it went from 9.59 to 10 o'clock and everything shut and none of the restaurants were open. So I went to go find some food. The only food I could find was a vending machine with a bunch of, uh, a bunch of ice cream bars and coffee. So we got ice cream bars and coffee. And then I was like, all right, we gotta find a place to sleep. So when I go to Japan, I bring one bag full of clothes for Konishiki, Cat Viper for sure. Oh, Cavendish, beautiful pirates. Um, I bring a bag full of clothes for Kony and then the rest of the stuff in the bag is just like space for me to bring stuff back. I just bring three bags in one bag and I fill them with like stuffed animal and card stuff and Dragon Ball toys and all that stuff. So I had this bag and it was uh, full of stuffed animals. So we went to the, there were actually 5,000 people sleeping in the airport. So the ground was like covered in people sleeping in the airport. And I found this little balcony off the cliff, off the edge of the, uh, of the dining area, the food court. So we went to the food court and brought our bags, walked with these huge bags full of like stuffed animals and stuff. And people were looking at us like, yo, there's no space around here. What are you doing? And I just casually lifted the bags over this wall of plants. And there was this beautiful balcony with nobody on it. We took all the stuffed animals out, wrapped them in our, uh, our dirty laundry and just made like a big bed on the balcony and slept for mad long. And I got up and I started running around and looking for stuff in the, in the, uh, airport. I ended up inventing a pirate utility belt out of a luggage strap and a koozie that I bought there. But yeah, I spent 28 hours in the airport and I was thinking, you know, if I'm going to be stuck in any airport, I'd like to be stuck in Narita airport in Japan. This is kind of like the best airport to be stuck in ever. So I actually had a blast and it turned into a really, really fun time. I made a great friend with the cab driver. We still keep in touch and I made a bunch of friends in the airport that day. So it was actually a really cool adventure getting stuck in the airport. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that story. That's my getting stuck in. The oh, 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 and the newspaper thing. Okay. I'm going to cut this part because I got to grab something. So I forgot to say, when we went to the Toy Animation uh, uh, Museum, I actually was able to find the Broly newspaper. So I bought, they had two left, I bought both of them. And I, after we came back from being stuck in the airport, I brought them up here and they were just sitting up here for like three months. And then I decided to start nailing some pages to the ceiling as I like to do with this stuff. So I'm nailing pages of this thing to the ceiling. And I look in here and on the second page, I see this and I just scream at the top of my lungs. That's me and Masako Nozawa getting my card signed, wearing my Awakened Power t-shirt. I'll throw a clearer picture of this up on the edit so you guys can see it, and I'll show you guys the card as well here. But um, yeah, I made it into the Dragon Ball Broly newspaper, and um, it was kind of one of the most epic stories of my life. So I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I'm a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip to you would be if you any of you dentists are out there and you've made it into an anime newspaper, hang it up and put it in your office. That's what I do. It's on my wall in my office. You can come see a picture of me in the Dragon Ball newspaper meeting Nasaka Nozawa getting my signature Goku signed wearing an Awaken Power t-shirt. So I kind of felt like I accomplished life at that point and I'm content with what I've done here on the planet Earth. Thank you so much. I guess we guys enjoyed this shrimp and story time and I'll see you next time.